you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When you've got worries, all the noise and the hurry seems to help, I know. Downtown, just listen to the music. The title The First Lady of British Music most certainly belongs to my next guest today. Star of stage, screen and a composer with a career spanning some seven decades. She embarked on a stage career at the age of seven. Her professional career began during World War II as an entertainer with the BBC. She made her film debut with a movie called A Medal for the General in 1944, just 12 years of age. As the 1950s dawned, Petula Clark was a superstar throughout the UK. Petula Clark, welcome to Melbourne. Hello. I'm so glad to be here. So (laughs) nice to have you. Yeah, I'm having a great time here. Yeah, and you were saying off air you found the fairy garden. I found the fairy tree. I I took a bit of finding. I had to go through the park twice before I could find it. (laughs) Yes. but, you know, the park is, so, well, it's the gardens, I'm sorry. It is so beautiful here. It's, uh, and it's, you know, I do actually like autumn. You know, I left New York um, and spring had sprung and, and here I am uh, in autumn. It's, it's, it's beautiful. The beautiful place. Isn't it? Yeah, we love Melbourne, of course, yeah. but uh, it's, uh, it's said to be the most livable city in the world. So we, we love it, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It's said to be the most livable city in the world, Melbourne. Ah, yes. I would go along with that, yes. Mm. It's certainly a city that I could live in very easily. Let me take you back a bit, uh, Petula, because it's a delight to talk to you, and uh, you were a great influence in my life as a, as a young kid growing up. At school, the choir mistress taught us all the little shoemaker. Would you believe really? that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as a choir, we sang that way, way back, and I'll never right forget that. shoemaker shop. This refrain would never stop. That's, that's the one. That's the one, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Ex- yeah that, that, was, that was a sort of a hit for me in, back in England. Well, yeah, it was I a big that. hit. It was a big hit. Here it is. There it is. In the shoemaker shop, this refrain would never stop as he tapped away, working all the day. It was a great song, and my memories of that are from the school days, and of course, you. And that was a big hit for you. That was one of your first, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. And we, I remember when we recorded it, you know, it was a very different kind of atmosphere to, to later on, you know. But we, the performers, had to stay in the studio. We had no right to go into the control room. And the control people were wearing, like, white jackets, you know, ro- oh, really? like scientists. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a very strange atmosphere. Oh. And, of course, you know, things, things changed a lot after that. And, the, you know, the most recent record I've made, we, we made in a... A studio about the size of a normal kitchen, you know, yes. and uh, it, it, it's a totally different thing now. Technology's really changed, hasn't it? it, it it's yes, just gone absolutely. so much advanced. It's all digital now too. And yet, you know, you're on vinyl there, way way back, and the vinyl recordings had something special about them. There was the uh, the atmosphere to them. It's it's a funny thing that you know. Um, I've been told by many people, oh, it's nothing like vinyl, you know. Mm. And I, I made a record a little while ago in, I think it was in New York, you know, one of those very high-tech studios, and we recorded it. And then the producer said to me, I know we have to work on it to, to, to mess it up a little bit. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we want it to sound like vinyl. Yeah, yeah. I said, I don't quite understand what you mean. He said, well, you know, there was always this sort of slight hiss in the that's background. Right. Yes. I, I, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, I, I that's what it that is. really, really bizarre. Well, look, so many people are going back to vinyl these days, and uh, that's I what know. your recording was in those very, very early days. Going back seven decades, you've had a, an enormous career. You started at the age of seven. Did you ever think at the age of seven or 12 years of age in that first movie that you'd have such a long career? No, 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 no. You know, I, 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 I didn't think about having a career at all. You know, mm. I just sang because... I liked singing, and then little by little, you know, I realized that people like to hear me sing, and that was nice because I, I was really a rather shy little girl, and it was only when I was on stage and singing that I could sort of conquer my, my shyness. And I still you know I don't think I've changed that much. Um, 
I still enjoy singing for the pure joy of it. You know, I, I, th- that's really my motive for doing it. Tell me how this all started, because I was reading a story about World War Two and the BBC. You'd gone there with your father, and there'd been a uh, an air raid siren going off, I think, and someone was asked to fill in and sing a song. Tell us the story. Well, yes, it, it, it was... Um the BBC used to use this particular theatre, which is still in London. It's right in Piccadilly. It's called the Criterion Theatre. It's still there, a um, very successful little theatre. And the BBC used it because it was underground, and it still is. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really like a glorified air raid shelter. It was, it was full of sandbags. And they used to do this show um, for children who had their either their father or you know their brother whoever, in my case it was my uncle who was serving over overseas in the army and we could go along and say don't worry about us, we're fine and we, you know, Auntie Mabel's okay and all that kind of, that kind of thing uh-huh. and I went along with several other kids and right in the middle of rehearsal there was the most gigantic air raid I mean the place was absolutely shaking you know, this was London right? and uh, a lot of the kids were very nervous and I wasn't because I was a, I was a London kid. And the producer asked if somebody would like to say a piece of poetry or sing a song or something to cool things down. And nobody else volunteered, so I put my hand up and said, I'll sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up on the stage and they, they put a box in front of the microphone so I could reach it. And um, I sang into, into the microphone and they heard it up in the control room and said, wow, you know, would you like to sing as well as send your message? And so I did. And that was the first time I was heard on the air, and there was an enormous reaction to it, you know, from the soldiers. Um, You know, Vera Lynn was the force's sweetheart, Yes. and I very quickly became the force's little girl. Isn't that beautiful? Representing the kids who'd been left behind. And that was really a start for you, wasn't it? It was, yes. And then the BBC uh, asked me to do lots of other things after that. And, and, you know, in those days we didn't have television. So radio was really very important. You had a number of hits. I mean, so there's been so many hits. If I listed them all, he we he hit till dinner time tonight. But uh, 1961, I remember there was Sailor, and that became your first number one hit in the UK, wasn't it? Yes. And it's, you, you know... Uh, I, I, I don't normally sing Sailor anymore, but, you know, particularly over here, um, people say to me, well, I hope you're going to sing Sailor. Oh, you we know? love it. We love <laughs> it. Yep. So I have to put it in. Um, <laughs> and so you, know, you should. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's fine with me, you know, it, yeah. it, it's okay. It was a big hit in French, too. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Well, well, so you went exactly. on to record in French, didn't you? You recorded a lot in French. Yes, well, I had this sort of... Uh, huge career that happened for me in France almost by accident. You know, I, 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 I didn't speak any French and I found myself, well, because I married a Frenchman, I found myself living in Paris and so I, you know, I recorded in French just as a kind of a lark, you know, and then suddenly there I was, a big star. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's been beautiful because, you know, I've learned a lot from that. You know, I, I worked with some fantastic people, with Jacques Brel, you know, I got to know Edith Piaf, and, uh, you know, you you learn from all of these people. You've had a, a wonderful life and uh, lots of experiences there. Romeo was your first gold disc, another wonderful hit for you. I dare say you'll be singing that tomorrow night in Melbourne. Uh, yes, I will be. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'd get lynched if I didn't sing downtown. Um, <laughs> and, and Romeo. I, I, would Romeo. Be, I would be very, very foolish to... Um, but, but, and they're all great songs, yes. all those Tony Hatt songs, you know, like Don't Sleep in the Subway, oh, Color My World, yeah. oh, were great. I'll do This Is My Song, of course. And um, but, but I Well, well you had that association with, with Charlie Chaplin, didn't you, because he wrote for you? Yeah. Well, This Is My Song was written by Charlie mm. um, for a movie that he did uh, with Sophia Loren and Marlon Brando. Uh, Countess from Hong Kong and I don't think the movie was much of a success but the song was and uh, he was absolutely over the moon and he invited me over to his place uh, very close to where we live actually and um, you know on the lake in, in Geneva and we had the most fantastic afternoon together just larking around and uh, I played the piano and he danced and 
you know, it, it was like like a kind of very magical moment. But you're in 1968. You revived your movie career. Tell us about Finian's Rainbow. Well, um, <clears throat> Jack Warner from Warner Brothers came to see me performing in, in Los Angeles and, and asked me if I'd like to do Finian's Rainbow. And I said, well, yes, I knew the music, you know, all those great songs. And I said, well, who will be playing Finian? He said, Fred Astaire. Oh. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> and I would be playing his daughter. And it was... Honestly, it was one of the most fantastic moments of my life, not just my career, but of my life, because working, the whole team were wonderful. It was directed by Francis Coppola, and uh, Fr Fred was just a dream to work with, and, and a lovely man. We had such fun together. Yes, it's a lovely movie, and uh, I watched it again the other day, knowing I'm interviewing you today, and I took another look at it, and I thought, isn't it beautiful? And it's so so simple. It's lovely music in there. It's just uplifting, isn't it? Really is good. Well, it was a difficult movie to make. You was know, it? Because was it's, it? a, it's a mixture of, um, you know, a, a quite a strong racial uh, situation, uh, plus a kind of fairy tale situation. Mm, that's it, right. It's, it, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but... Uh, you know, we had such fun making it that, to me, it's a, it's a wonderful souvenir. 1981, we see you back on stage playing Maria in The Sound of Music. Now, you had an association with Julie Andrews when you were a kid because you, you sort of grew up as, as child actors, didn't you? And here you are now playing Maria in The Sound of Music. Well, yes, I knew Julie. We were, we were kids together. You know, we used to entertain the troops uh, uh, during the war, you know. Um but uh, I didn't want to do The Sound of Music, you know, and I said, I said to the producer in London, I said, this is Julie Andrews' show. And he said, no, actually, it wasn't written for Julie Andrews. Mm. I didn't know that. It was written for Mary Martin. Yes, yes. Who uh, was much more like me, actually, than, than Julie Andrews. Um, and I said, well, you know, if, if I do it, it'll be very different. He said, well, that's what we want. And that's what they got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're on stage with that for quite a lot of months. I think you held one of the records for longevity, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes, I played it for a long time. But then, then I went on much later to do Sunset Boulevard. Yes, what a beautiful and show. I definitely played that for longer than anyone else. Yeah. It's, that, that is a, a very different kind of show to The Sound of Music. We saw that in Melbourne when it uh, premiered here some years ago and a delightful, delightful story. A wonderful story. Yes. You would have loved doing that. You're having talking that about Sunset Boulevard? Sunset Boulevard, yep. Well, I don't know about delightful. I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a pretty heavy kind of story. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wasn't keen on playing the role really? because it was very different to anything I'd done before. Yeah. You know, uh, she says things that I really disagree with. Her, her behavior is something I disagree yeah. with. But but in, in fact, it was great fun playing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, you can do those things when you're acting, can't you? You can play things you don't really uh, believe in in real life. But um, having said that, why I said I, I, I like the the show is that it taught me a lot about the background of that studio. And it was wonderful information we all got. Yes, so Paramount Studios, yes. Mm. Yes, of course. You know, And I, I went to Paramount Studios uh, after that, and it's... Uh, you know, it's it's an amazing place, you know, and they have a music library of all the music that was ever written for all those amazing movies over the years. It's it's an amazing place. But, um, I, you know, p playing, uh, playing in that role w was really an education for me. And, of course, the music was Andrew Lloyd Webber and a very different kind of music to what, what I was used to singing. Mm -hmm. And I, I found that was an education too. I had to learn to sing in a slightly different way. But Julie, your latest uh, CD came out last year in 2016. What, what's coming up next for you after this tour? Well, I was in New York before I came here, uh, uh, working on... on uh, I'm going to be doing a US tour uh, in uh, November and December. But I also went to Montreal while I was in Canada. Um, because I'm doing a new record of uh, French-Canadian songs. It'll be in French, of course. And I'll be doing a, a tour of French Canada um, and, and English Canada, actually, in uh, next year, this time next year. So that's what's happening right now. <laughs> 
I know what your age is. I don't know what the audience does, so I'm not going to mention a lady's age on air. <laughs> but uh, having said that, how do you keep up the momentum? I'm going to say that it's, it's a big workload for you. I, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm energised by it. You know, I, I don't find it tiring at all. You know, I talk to people, but, you know, people in the business who say, you're going off on tour? Well, you know, that's exhausting. I love being on tour. And I, it has to be said, I adore Australia. So, you know, I'm really very happy to be here. It's a place where I could live very easily. Um, but I don't, unfortunately. <laughs> Which means, you know, you have to, it's the traveling that's tiring. That's, that's the most tiring part of this business, I find. All the things around it, you know. But the actual performing is sheer delight for me. I, I'm happy on stage. I can hear the love in your voice. It's it's wonderful to hear that passion there, and it's it's just delightful, Petula. Petula's appearing at uh, Hamer Hall. That's here at the Melbourne Arts Centre. Half past eight tomorrow night, Saturday night, and you can still buy tickets at Ticketmaster 1300 136 166, or we can call the Arts Centre direct. 1300 136 166. Petula, I'd love to talk to you for an hour. I know you haven't got that time, but uh, perhaps next time we can catch up with you next time in Melbourne and uh, do a live studio with you and uh, play a lot of your oh, songs yes. too. Oh, yeah, that would be good yes well you know we have to do it this way because uh, you know I've, I've got rehearsals today oh and, of course uh, you know yeah. you, you'll love <laughs> that auditorium glad- that that auditorium um, yeah. is beautiful I'm, mm. I'm glad to have the chance to talk to you but you're lo- lovely to talk to you too thank you for your time today a pleasure. Okay, bye bye to you. All the best to you for, for Saturday's performance. Hey, Mahal, half past eight on Saturday night, 1300 136 166. I'd be amiss to go off this program without playing this. Sailors, stop your roaming. See you.